So I've been covering a story with CD Projekt Red in regards to the development of Cyberpunk 2077 and Crunch. And needless to say, uh, you guys haven't always been thrilled with my coverage of it. Uh, most people citing that they've been working overtime uh, pretty much all of 2020 due to the pandemic. Uh, people citing that, you know, why are we calling this some magical thing like called Crunch? Why don't we just call it what it is? It's overtime. We all work overtime. What's the big deal? Uh, and hey, these people are really well compensated for their overtime. So whatever. Who cares? They know what they're signing up for, right? I mean, never mind that they actually typically don't know what they're signing up for. A lot of these developers are fresh out of college when they first join this company and they just keep um, basically cycling through them. In fact, a lot of developers do end up quitting uh, because of the culture, but it, it's tough. It, it's tough. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's wrong to have the opinions that you have. We all have various opinions. Recently, uh, you know, this game was delayed again uh, for, I think this is the third or fourth delay, uh, despite the fact that it's gone gold. Very strange to see a, a game gone gold. In fact, I, th is this the first time in gaming history a game has gone gold and then still been delayed? Very weird situation. It's an only a three-week delay, supposedly. I mean, I, who know, who all bets are off. It could easily get delayed into 2021. Uh, and they basically admitted when they delayed it that they miscalculated the amount of work that still needed to be done, uh, which is a management issue. Very clearly a massive management issue. Uh, there's been management issues all throughout pretty much everything that CD Projekt Red has ever worked on. For some reason, management can't get their act together, which is technically what leads to crunch. Uh, we have heard stories at CD Projekt Red that, hey, you know what? Uh, if they didn't piss around, we could have got a hell of a lot more done over the last four years and might not even need to crunch at all. But yeah, it is what it is, unverified, whatever you want to say. Well, Jason Schreier's at it again in wake of this news. And let's just, just take a look at what he said about what a confirmed employee, according to him, again, this is Jason Schreier's sources, I can't confirm them, uh, is saying about the work environment currently existing at CD Projekt Red right now. Like, this is happening right now. So, Cyberpunk 2077 getting a three-week delay is unusual, but probably won't change much for the developers, many of whom are going to be crunching into December anyways for a post-launch patch but I sure do hope reality is becoming clearer to those who tried to deny it, tried to deny the crunch. He goes on to say, look, a CD Projekt Red dev told me recently that they just clocked a 100-hour work week. Another former dev just told me they saw some of their friends there and they looked physically ill. So kindly, GTFO with the, but, but I work long hours too responses, which I'm kind of paraphrasing. I don't know if that's actually how he words it. Uh, but you know, when, when you consider that there is only, you know, 168 hours in a week to imagine a hundred hours at a single job is absolute insanity. And that's the reality that's going on at CD Projekt Red right now. According to Jason Schreier, again, he's been on the forefront, on the battlegrounds against Crunch for a long time. Uh, why, why we call it Crunch versus Overtime uh, is specifically because what happens uh, in, in the video game world versus, say, uh, you know, if you're working at a warehouse, right, and it's holiday season and you have to put in extra hours during the holidays or whatever, is projects get mismanaged. Almost all crunch happens because of mismanagement. It doesn't happen because there's higher demand for a product at a certain time or there's a higher this or a higher that. You know, Typically, like when, when we work overtime, uh, when a majority of us work overtime, in my experience working overtime at various jobs, it's because we had an increase in sales during a certain period. Uh, there was an increase in orders during a certain period. Uh, holiday season, warehouse workers and, and other manufacturers might be working overtime because there's just an increase in product demand. But see... That's not the case here. When it comes to the video game space, crunch occurs because development time is wasted by management, miscalculated, and leading to basically having to rush things together in the run-up to release. And when you rush things together, it leads to super long hours. And we're talking 
100 hour work weeks. He just talked to a developer at CD Projekt Red that told him, I just got done clocking a 100 hour work week. 100 hours. How many work weeks do you think a person can go like that and actually be okay? And then a former dev who quit at CD Projekt Red, probably because of crunch, I assume, literally said, I just saw some of my friends there and they are physically ill. They are getting sick. They are. They do not look well. Why? They're not seeing sunlight. They're not being active. They're not seeing their families, of course. That's an emotional toll. They're not probably eating well. There is a physical and emotional toll that happens when you're pushing 100-hour work weeks. I don't care what profession it is. I don't care if you're in mining. I don't care if you are a web developer. I don't care if you're in the personal care industry, if you're in the fast food industry. I don't care where you are, a cashier at Walmart. It doesn't matter. 100-hour work weeks is not healthy for anyone. So when we talk about we all work overtime, you're right, we do. How many of you work 100-hour weeks at one job? But be honest, if you're going to be critical of us saying that this is wrong, how many of you work 100-hour work weeks? How many of you get physically ill because of your overtime? Not talk about being tired. We all get tired. Physically ill. 100-hour work weeks, physically ill. You tell me that that's happening at your job, then you have the right to say, oh, who cares? It happens in my profession too. And yes, there's going to be certain individuals that do put in that kind of work. Do put in that kind of time. I believe Elon Musk at one point pointed out how he basically just works and sleeps, right? So, like, there are certain individuals out there that that's just their norm. But, again, does Elon Musk look physically ill? He's clearly taking care of himself. Of course, he's also rich as hell, so I'm sure he takes mad vacations when he can. The, the reality is that CD Projekt Red is treating their employees almost like slave labor in a sense. In a sense, they're paid, okay? So I get it. Slave labor is probably a bad comparison, but they're acting like they can treat them that way just because they pay them. Being able to compensate your employees well is not an excuse. Now, again, the the general excuse is going to come out that they could just quit, and they do. They quit all the damn time. And then the next batch of developers comes along like suckers, all excited to work for their favorite company, only to be taken advantage of again. And again, and again, and when the new hires come in, you know what they, you know what the management tells them? We promise there won't be crunch this time. They said it publicly just last year to Jason Schreier. The management told Jason Schreier, "We are not going to crunch." Hundred hour work weeks? Does that sound like they're not crunching? Oh, but they can only work forty eight hours legally. Since when do companies follow labor laws? just being honest and i don't know what's happening you know i don't know what can legally be done about this because this is this is going to kill people is it going to take someone dying before this changes seriously is a developer going to have to die at his desk coding a game before this changes physically ill 100-hour work weeks? I'm sorry. We, how can we just sit back and say this is acceptable? And the, the other excuse that's going to come out is this is just one person. You know, this is just, how, how can we believe Jason Schreier? Are you questioning Jason Schreier's integrity? Now, you can disagree with his opinions on things. You can disagree with his takes and his angles. But you're going to think that he is fake, that, that he's just making this up, that he has fake sources? Is that is that Because that's questioning his integrity. If he's making this up, absolutely, we should we should burn Jason Schreier at the stake in terms of his career as a journalist, right? He should never be he he should be canned and never work in this industry again, just like Philip Mewson, if he's making this up. But we all know Jason Schreier is not making this up. We all know he has legitimate inside sources at these companies. We all know he does his homework. You don't have to agree with his homework or agree with his conclusions from his homework. But we all know he does his homework. He doesn't just put this stuff out here just to dramatize what's happening in the industry. He's directly quoting his sources. 
This isn't this. What, the, you know what the definition of insanity is? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. This is what CD Projekt Red is doing. They feel like they can come back crunch, that they learn from every project, and promise the next batch of developers that we are not going to crunch. We have learned. We found a way. It's not going to happen. And then they do it again and again and again because they don't learn. Because the managers are people that grew up in the crunch culture. So they don't know how to complete a project without crunching. And it just continues cyclical and cyclical and over and over again. It's hard to get management and control that didn't grow up in that crunch culture in the West especially. But you know what happens in the East too? We always ignore Japan. It happens. Crunch happens in Japan too. You know why it's not talked about? You know why it's not talked about? Because the developers over there don't complain about it. And now you might be like, why don't they complain about it? It's an honor thing. Um, it's embarrassing to them to complain about an employer. Uh, I don't know if you guys know that. In Japan, it's considered dishonorable to complain about your employer who provides you a paycheck. Even though you're earning that paycheck and you're providing them labor, you can't complain about your, your employer in Japan. It's just it's a cultural thing. But we have confirmed reports that it happens over there and employees aren't necessarily healthy all the time. This is an industry-wide problem all across the world. This is not meant to just specifically target CD Projekt Red. And I'm not sitting here telling you, hey, don't buy, don't buy, you know, Cyberpunk 2077, right? Don't buy the game. Like these people are literally sacrificing their health to provide us a game that might be the greatest game ever made. Like if anything, that should almost encourage you to buy it. Uh, just to say thank you to those developers. I mean, apparently they even get bonus kickbacks off sales. So you're actually going to help them get bonus paychecks potentially even after they quit, you know, be just, just from buying the game. So there's a benefit to them to buy it. But you're also telling CD Projekt Red that it was worth it. That it was worth almost killing people to get this game out the door. This game should be delayed a year, however long it takes, so long as people aren't working 100-hour workings. You want to push 50 hours, you want to hit 60, okay, that happens, right? We all hit 50, 60. We, we, we work 10, 20 hours overtime, it happens. How many of you are working 60 hours overtime per week? Not per month, per week. That should never happen. People shouldn't get physically ill because they can't leave the fucking office. I'm sorry for swearing. I... I this is a serious thing. I don't think people quite grasp the like when I talk about these things and I get all of these dislikes and stop bitching. We all have a hard life and all this shit. We get all these dislikes. I don't care. Bring on the dislikes. I'm not going to sit here and pretend this is okay. Me sitting in my cozy chair here it is not okay. How, if any of you, if any of you are sitting there and you're going to tell me that 100-hour work weeks are okay, working to the point of physical illness, and then probably still having to work on top of that, is okay, and they choose to live this way. No. They don't want to walk away from a paycheck. They want to see their project through, right? There's a certain dedication level. When you start something, you want to finish it. But not like this. I don't care about investors. You shouldn't care about investors either. This game's going to sell like gangbusters, period. They could delay it six months. They could delay it a year. It's still going to sell well. Whatever they have to do to avoid this kind of crunch. The game supposedly went gold. Right? If it went gold, why are we still working our employees to the bone? Because the game really isn't gold. It's not. If it requires a day one patch to play, it's not gold. Now, if you want to say there's going to be a day one patch or a day zero patch, as they call it, uh, that's going to just make the game a little bit better, it's going to have some enhancements, sure. But you shouldn't need that patch to play the game, but you do. And if you need the patch to play the game, that means the game ain't gold. It ain't ready to go. It ain't ready to go. As is, you can't print discs and have people play the game. Nope, because it's not ready. You know it's not ready. You're going to print incomplete discs and then release a day one patch. That's not ready. It's not going to be ready in time by November 19th. So three-week delay. And you really think that three-week delay estimate is accurate? Can you really believe they're not going to delay it again? I don't know. This industry needs change. It needs 
new management it needs you know we talked about unions i don't know if unions are the answer i i'm, I'm always kind of iffy on, on unions one way or the other there's some benefits there's some there's some pitfalls it, it gets a little political at times so i, I don't want to dive too deep into it because i don't know what the answer really is beyond the fact that we definitely need better management in this industry we definitely need better management i just i don't know i don't know what, what to do the weird thing is the weird thing is, I, you know, mostly cover Nintendo, and Nintendo in Japan, in Japan specifically, I'm not talking retro studios or anything, Nintendo in Japan seems to be like the one video game company that doesn't work their, you know, their, their, their programmers and their artists into the floor. It's, it's weird, right? Like, they just don't. We have all the reports coming out that they're very comfortable delaying games for however long they need to just so they don't have to force employees to work unhealthy amounts of hours. It, it, it's kind of crazy. I mean, you always have directors, you know, the, the usuals that are going to put in the extra time, right? The Sakurais of the world. They're, those guys are expected to put in the extra time. They are the leaders of the project. They should be leading the way. Of course, they're going to put in more time than their employees do. They absolutely should. A.G. and Numa should spend more time with the Zelda stuff than any of the other people on the Zelda team, besides maybe the director of the new game. So, it, to me, it's a cultural thing at this point in the industry that has made this okay, and the stories keep getting buried every time. Cyberpunk 2077 is going to come out, and the stories are going to go away. It's going to be a fart in the wind. We're all going to be talking about how awesome the game is, and we're just going to forget. We're going to forget. Until the stories rear their head again next year. And then the year after. The year after. The more we dismiss the stories, the less pressure we put on these companies, the longer this is going to continue. Again, someone's going to die someday. Someone's going to die at their job programming a video game. If we let this continue. Because it's getting worse. 100 hour work weeks? Man, that's even worse than I thought it was. I thought they were just pushing 60, 70, 100 hours? My God, I hope, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm religious. It's okay if you're not. I hope the Lord's watching over those developers, man. Please bring them home safe to their families at the end of this. I don't want to see anyone die over making a video game. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from the Center Prime. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.